No, no, if you get a space, keep it. <laughs> Okay, hopefully everyone can hear me. As I said, we have now gone back in time because we are in AD 81 and we're here to have a look at this triumphal arch. What does a triumphal arch mean? Victory in battle. Because this is the arch of Titus and this is here to commemorate the battle for Jerusalem. Now the battle for Jerusalem started in AD 66 it didn't finish until AD 70 and throughout the whole bloodthirsty history of the Roman army the battle for Jerusalem was one of the most bloodthirsty and one of the most shameful because thousands and thousands of Jewish people were killed thousands more were brought back to go to the Colosseum um, the second temple of Solomon was destroyed and not only that, but the most precious sacred relics of the Jewish people were brought back here as spoils of war. And they include the two silver trumpets and the solid gold seven arm candelabra, the menorah. And if you get a chance to have a look carved on the inside here, you can see the menorah and the silver trumpets being paraded down the Roman forum as spoils of war. And one of the tragedies is that these items have never been recovered. Um, and as a little side note, you can see the Arch of Titus is chained across because that's been the case since the Second World War where the Roman government said, as a mark of respect and to try to make amends for the terrible things that happened in the battle for Jerusalem, we will not allow people to walk underneath. Um, but how do we know this is celebrating a victory? Apart from the fact it's a triumphal arch, if you look at the carvings on that side, on the inside, you've got a chariot. The chariot is being led by a woman, and the woman is representing Rome as a goddess, Rome as a deity, to say this battle was fought and won for Rome. Now, inside the chariot you have Titus. He was the emperor at the time. But behind Titus, you have got a winged figure, or Nike, who is actually crowning Titus. And whenever you see a winged figure, or Nike, that means victory. And please, have a look round Rome. There are hundreds of them. Because let's face it, the empire lasted a long time, and the Romans were fairly successful. So now whenever you see winged figures, you'll know that means victory in battle, and you'll know why Nike put wings on their running shoes to try and get victory. Now, is anyone any good at Latin here? No one's admitting it, okay. Because on the other side of this arch, we have an inscription that goes like this. Senatus, what do you think? The Senate. The Senate. Mm -hmm. Populus. The people. The people. Qui, kind of of, which, who. Romanus, Rome. PQR, the Senate and people of Rome. That's what it means. And it was a really important symbol back in the ancient times. The Romans would have it on their banners going into war, but it's still a really important symbol here today. Where have you seen it? On our stickers, that's why we put it there. But have you seen? on the drain covers, on the billboards, on the post boxes, on the statues, on the buses, on so many community works, SPQR is still a really important symbol here today. And in fact, a lot of the young men still have it tattooed across their arm. That's a whole different hobby for some of them. Okay, the rest of the inscription, August Vespasian, 
Devo Tito, Divine Titus. This was the time of the Flavian dynasty because there were three emperors, one after the other, from the same family. And without them, we would have an awful lot less to see here today because the father Vespasian started the Colosseum. His first son Titus was involved in the battle for Jerusalem and then Titus's brother Domitian, he put up the arch of Titus for his brother, he completed the Colosseum and we've already seen some of the palaces and his circus up on the hill. So let's hear of the Flavian dynasty, bloodthirsty lot though they were. Okay everyone, we are now going to go forward in time again. We do have a few more steps. We'll stroll this way. <laughs> 